Hey everybody, Andrew Ains with Golf Academy. Warm welcome as ever. Thanks for looking at today's video. If you're new to the channel, do me a huge favor. Maybe consider hitting that subscribe button down the bottom. That would be great. And if you think the video is any good, a little thumbs up would be really nice. So today I'm going to talk to you about what I think is, for me, the most frustrating driver in golf. And I'm going to tell you why I say that. This is the new Mizuno, or Mizuno, dependent on your pronunciation, STZ230 driver, just come out. Now, Mizuno have been making incredible golf irons for like forever. I think the company was formed in 1906 or something like that. I'm not sure when they first got into golf, but as a, a young lad, I use Mizuno irons, TP11s, TP9s, um, they've been used by the top players and still are used by the top players. Their irons are just legendary. Yeah, nothing beats Mizuno, you know, for that feel, for that classic sort of look. Then we come to the drivers. As a retailer and a fitter of golf clubs, I find this driver and its predecessors the most frustrating to try and sell. Mizuno makes some of the best drivers out there. Every bit as good as a Ping, a Callaway, a TaylorMade, a Titleist, a PXG, the list goes on. I can't sell them. And I scratch my head sometimes, why are people not buying Mizuno drivers? Because they are fantastic. They've got all the technology that all the other guys have got, sometimes a little bit more. The looks are amazing. The prices are comparative, sometimes a little bit cheaper, maybe not on this model, but in the past they have been. So as a retailer, I buy a certain number of what we call pre-book sales. At the beginning of the season, to get a decent price on product, you commit to buying a certain amount of product, whatever it might be, 5,000, 4,000, 20,000 pounds of the stock. And I guess, the more you buy, sometimes the cheaper you get a discount on it, just kind of the way of the world. So in the past, I've always committed to the full product range of Mizuno. You know, I have woods, I have irons, I have hybrids, putters, you name it, I've got it. And I generally start the season, and bear in mind Mizuno tend to launch a new driver every year. Um, I generally start seeing maybe about eight, nine drivers on the shelf. And at the end of the season, I finish up with about five or six still left on the shelf. I just can't sell them. And I really try hard to sell them. People come in for a fitting who say, I need a new driver. I say, look, you open to try anything? Yeah, I'll try a Ping, I'll try a Mizuno, I'll try a Cobra. Now and again, people buy the Mizuno, but it's pretty rare. And I end up with half a dozen drivers, which I have to knock out cheap, discount them to get rid of them, however I can do that. So it's frustrating because it's such a good product. And the purpose of this video today is to try and get you guys watching it to go and try this driver, because if you're not trying it, you are missing out. Let's tell you a little bit about it. As I always say about these things, um, if you want to find out all the details, then, then go and look on their website. There's two different models. I think there might even be three, but the ones I'm going to tell you about is the STZ today, the 230. This is equivalent to like the Ping Max. It's kind of neutral. It's straight, stable, and, and fairly low spinning. We're not going to spend a whole bunch of time on this. We've got this new Cortec chamber, which is some of the thing that they've been developing. Um, just quickly run you through it. Slots provides additional, ooh, something I can't pronounce, Kariri, <laughs> Kariri, but I don't know what that is, providing sole flex TPU material allows sole flexure for fast stress reduction. This is a little bit above my pay grade, folks. Um, go and read it, see what you make of it. But anyway, Cortec chamber, what does it mean? Faster ball speeds, a little bit more forgiving, I guess. There's a video there if you want to click on it and watch it. Quick look at the driver features, Cortec chamber, just talked about, at the same time locating weight closer to the club face to reduce spin rates while contributing to a more solid, powerful and sensation at impact. Forge beta titanium face, we've seen that before. Unified sole, carbon sole, straight fly bias, quick switch hosel, modern player's profile. It's all there for you, I'm not gonna waffle on. There are some very good shaft options. Uh, Mizuno always offer fantastic 
chefs. Um, have a look at some of these in the range. Aldilla Accent Red 50. There's loads of these. Yeah, we'll just quickly scroll through them. Ultralights in there. Fujikora Mataras. Uh, lots of those. You know, you're not going to be short of chefs. Mitsushiba Chemicals. Um, just great, high quality chefs. Tenzai Roars. Again, the real deals, not the watered down chefs. For you shaftoids out there, it's, it's an absolute feast. Even flow riptides, Project X Hazardous in Smoke Black, Smoke Black, RDX Blue Smoke. I think there's a green one in here as well, which PVD. I mean, just so many great chefs, loads of grips. So when you want to spec up, this is where Mizuno kind of score over some of the other manufacturers. When you want to spec up and go to a slightly more exotic shaft, no upcharge. You know, if you go to some other companies and you say, oh, I want the hazardous smoke uh, green in blah, 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 they'll say, yeah, you can have that, but it's another 90 pound upcharge on top of the price. And you're like, oh, okay, um, fine. And oh, I don't want a multi-compound grip on there. That's another 10 pounds. Where Mizuno are great, any shaft, any grip, you know, of which there's 27 grips. And how many shafts was there options in there? I didn't see as we went through. Um, 23 shaft options. <laughs> so there's the choice. And obviously your local fitting center can take you through what shafts are best for you and away you go. Price wise, should normally save that till the end. I've been, haven't got my stock in. This is just a demo yet. Um, I think the price of this driver is gonna range somewhere between 449, 449 pounds to 499. That's the spread I was seeing on the internet at the moment. So comparative really to G430, that sort of thing. In the past, they have dropped their price in a little bit underneath some of the big boys, but they've obviously decided that this time they wanna go head to head on the price, which I don't think is a bad thing. Shall we hit some? Let's go. Right, let's tell you what spec we've got of this, give you a little overhead shot of it while we're looking at it. It looks fantastic. I love the, I love the crown of the club with the graphite, um, Beautiful glossy finish. We've got this Cortex chamber in the Mizuno blue at the bottom, more carbon in the back, bottom of the sole of the club. For looks, wow, this, this is amazing. Top of the club, we've just got the little Runbird logo as the alignment mark. I've got this in, a, in the STZ. The STX is the more draw biased version, which we're not going to test today. Stunning looks. I've got, um, what have I got in here? A Mitsubishi. Kaylee shaft in here, I think it's Kaylee. The, um, it's a 60 gram in stiff. I like the way Mizuno cut their lengths of their drivers just over, I think the 45 or 45 and a quarter, so just over. And for those of you who might be interested, it's got a Lamkin ST hybrid grip, although you probably couldn't care less what grip's on it. But there we go, I've told you anyway. Um, where am I? I'm at Kinsale Golf and Fitness Club. That's where I wanna be, down the gym. Um, nice driving hole, pretty wide open. If you miss the fairway on this, then uh, it's a good miss. Skew, you might get a bit of rustling as I hit the ball. The, the mic kind of picks up on my clothing a little bit, so excuse if there's any weird sounds as I hit this, but uh, it does look stunning behind the ball. For I kid you not, I think this is one of the, the best looking drivers this year. Let's hit it and let's see. Okay, so there was a low necky strike. Not a great strike, but a pretty good result. So we dive in, talk figures as we hit a couple. I've got a 102 club speed miles an hour. I've got a 146 ball speed. Hit it low on the face, just 7.6 launch angle. That needs to go up to at least another three, four degrees. Although it's a poor strike, the spin was good at 2.5. And I got a 235 carry predicted run out of 261. I'm using Pro V1 balls on the deck. Um, great feel, great noise, sort of a quite a quiet driver as it comes off the face. Let's try and hit up on this one a little bit more. Oh my. Now that, I kid you not, that's that was a good strike. Feels like it's spun up a little bit for some reason, although I hit it out the middle. So yeah, oh no, it hasn't. So I've launched at 11.6, 2.3 spin, 2.40 carry, 
again 102 club speed 143 this is about me folks you know i can lean on it a little bit i can swing a little bit faster but 102 is about my comfortable club speed 145 ball speed and that's giving me a 240 carry you know running out to whatever the ground conditions allow that's that's uh, that's about as far as i hit it these days so we'll try and lean on one I'll try and bust this let's see what happens anything could happen probably he's not going to go any further turned it over a little bit oh big jump over that bunker did the club speed go up no isn't that bizarre sometimes you've done this yourself you think yeah i'm going to try and put a little bit extra into this and you really feel you're going for it and this club speed goes up like one mile an hour and because you've tried so hard you've maybe lost control over it so um yeah that didn't really work but again a very impressive set of numbers 11 degree launch spinning at 1800 it might have been slightly toe strike but uh, this is an amazing driver and you've got to go and try it for yourself i'm going to go one more That was pretty good. I love the feel off it. Love the feel. Just feels amazing off the club face. And I think I've put some pretty consistent numbers on the board here. Um, for some reason that's not picked up club speed, but it's got ball speed and all the rest of it. Let's just flash up those four drives that we've hit. So let's look at club speed. Very, very consistent on the club speed. I've averaged just shy of 145. The launch average was 10.2 after that first one, which I've necked a little bit. Spin rates are good at 2.4. My average carry distance is 2.39. What can I say? It's a great driver. This, this driver will perform. You put this up against the G430, a tailor-made Stealth 2, um, the latest Callaway, whatever it's called, Paradigm, Paradigm, who knows. Um, this would keep up with them. But I think Mark Crossfield once said, and it was a great quote, he said, this is the best driver that you'll never buy. And that's a very good but sad way of putting it. Not sad in what he said, it's just the truth that this driver won't be a big seller, and it should be. So I urge you, you're in the market for a new driver this year. And I'm not, Mizuno don't incentivize me to say these words. I, I, this is my feelings on it. They, Mizuno don't email and say, Andrew, do a video on YouTube and tell people how good this driver is. I, I'm doing this because I truly deeply believe that this is a top class driver and you've got to go and try it because you won't be disappointed. That's it. I've gone on enough, haven't I? Thanks for watching. Um, if you like the video, give it a little thumbs up and I'll see you all again soon. Mizuno, you're in my bag, I think. Definitely. Bye for now.